from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Yemba Umar. Hello and welcome. Bandits attacked two communities in Batsari, local government area of Katsina State, killed at least 30 people, most of them women and children. Delta State Governor Dr. Ifai Yoko asked the police and military authorities to fish out armed herdsmen responsible for the killing of eight people in Ugweli, local government area. Federal government warns against plans by some groups to state protests across the country to demand the sack of the nation's service chiefs, alleges that action is masterminded by the opposition. And Chinese tourist dies in France after contracting the new coronavirus, the first fatality from the disease outside of Asia, plus business and sports. On business news tonight, Securities and Exchange Commission seeks extensive framework on public-private partnerships to help governments achieve infrastructure objectives. On Sports News tonight, Liverpool FC are five wins away from their first Premier League title in 30 years after seeing off Norwich City to open a 25-point gap. The residents of Tawa and Dakar villages in Batsari, local government area of Katsina State, have become the latest victims of the rampaging bandits in the northwest zone of the country. And no fewer than 30 people, mostly elderly women and children, have been killed after a group of armed men launched an attack on the communities. Some of the residents told Channel's television that the bandits came in large numbers on motorcycles yesterday night, shooting sporadically. The Commission of Police in the state, Senusi Buba, also said that the Tsawa village alone, 21 people were killed, some of them burnt to death, while nine other people were killed in the village. Most of their property, including livestock, were also burnt to ashes by the bandits. Myself, in conjunction with the army, we mobilized our men, Pufada, and the component of the army to, to intercede. You can see the, the terrain. Uh, very, very far and no network here. Uh, and then also the, the distance and the bad road. Uh, that notwithstanding, they were able to come and uh, engage them to a large extent. And uh, they got scared and left. But uh, before they could arrive, unfortunately, some of these houses you can see were, were, were set up less. It looks a uh, selected manner of uh, burning. I don't know what could inform this kind of uh, the studly act. Whatever is the, the reason is most uh, unfortunate, even if it is a reprisal or whatever it is, as is being speculated, is uh, most unfortunate. His Excellency has done his best in ensuring that uh, sanity is brought to bear on these uh, warring communities, the headers and the, and the farmers. We, we, we traversed the length and breadth of, uh, of this state to ensure there is peace so that uh, there wouldn't be such uh, attacks by one community or one group uh, against, uh, against the other. Uh, with this development, uh, it's sad and um, definitely we are going after these hoodlums. Meanwhile, Ugweru Kingdom in Ugeli local government area of Delta State has been thrown into mourning following an attack by suspected armed herdsmen, resulting in the death of at least eight people. Several others were also said to have been sustaining severe injuries in the attacks, which reportedly started on Thursday on Avon, Agadama, Ohoro and other communities in Ugweru. In his response to the incident, the state governor, Dr. Ifan Yokoa, condemned what he termed the renewed herdsmen attacks on the unsuspecting villagers. He, however, called for restraints, saying that he had directed the commission of police and the brigade commander, 63 Brigade, Nigerian Army Asaba, to ensure that peace is restored to the communities. Governor Okoa also asked the authorities of the Nigerian Army to investigate the alleged involvement of persons suspected to be military personnel in the attack and fish them out. 
To other stories now, the presidency is uh, warning against an alleged plan by some groups to mobilize about 2,000 people to stage protests against heads of the nation's military institutions. In a statement, the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Garbashehu, accused the political class of masterminding the protests. The statement adds, this imminent gathering is the latest in a series of demonstrations orchestrated by the opposition to embarrass the government of President Muhammad Buhari. A group of politicians and beneficiaries of Boko Haram insurgency is right now paying for people to join their planned protests against our country's service chiefs. It adds that the recent protests by the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, staged at various foreign missions in the country, as well as the uncomplimentary chants by some people during the president's recent visit to Burundi State, were part of the move. The presidency's warning comes against the backdrop of calls from different quarters for the sack of the service chiefs in the light of rising insecurity in the nation. Efforts to clean up Ogoni land, that's uh, the picture there, has uh, resulted. Many years of exploration activities appears to be in the full swing as 36 remediation sites have been handed over to contractors involved in the cleanup. The Minister of Environment, Mohammed Abubakar, says that 29 projects are for remediation, while seven are for groundwater monitoring. This next report takes a look at the projects and expectations of the federal government and other stakeholders. Covering around 1,000 square kilometers in River State, Ogoni land has been the site of oil industry operations since the late 1950s. However, an independent study conducted by the United Nations Environment Program reveals the nature and extent of oil contamination in the land. These include contaminated land, groundwater, surface water, sediment, vegetation, air pollution, public health, industry practices and institutional issues. The conclusion is a recommendation for the cleanup of the area. This cleanup is for the benefit of the people of Ogoni land and other surrounding communities in the Delta and to the glory of God. On June 2, 2016, Vice President Professor Emil Shibajo flags off the commencement of the cleanup exercise under the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project as recommended in the UNEP report. Since then, Remediation works have been ongoing across the four local government areas affected. The Minister of Environment is here to hand over another 36 sites to contractors to continue the exercise. However, he has some concerns. The way it's looking uh, is not going to be completed at the stated date. However, it's not bad. Uh, we can still come back on track, but like I said, we are going to look at it critically and uh, undertake the changes that need to be taken. Both the legal framework and the technical specifications have all been designed and then advanced uh, in compliance with the international best practices. I can also confirm to you that today is a, another remarkable day. We've recorded more successes and more successes are on the way. Engaging the people is key in ensuring the success of the project and the people are prepared to give peace a chance for productive exercise. Okay. Element people need to be carried along. And I think no element person. We have competent contractors who can handle the job, but nobody. And I want to say it, I'm an element man. I'm a letter to protect the interests of element people, and I will never compromise. The people of Ogale will give you 100 cooperation and we will hope, we will hope that you are not going to try to uh, shortchange us. Beyond the remediation, a member of the House of Representatives believes that the petroleum industry bill can take care of future oil spills to prevent the Ogoni land situation. There must be processes and procedures that must be followed to ensure that the issues of uh, this level of degradation in my area does not occur anywhere in the world and I'm sure that PIB will have to take uh, uh, that into cognizance. For now, government expects the people of Ogoni to ensure that the contractors are diligent in delivering a clean, healthy community for them. 
More stories now. The Edo State Command of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency says that it is ready to battle the menace of drug abuse in the state. The agency gave this assurance when its operatives raided a den of suspected drug sellers in Benin City, the Edo State capital. The principal staff officer, media of the command, says that the search uncovered the sale of marijuana and other substances. A crew witnessed the raid and attempts by the suspects to escape. The cover of palm trees and bushes with the space between the plants turns out to be an insufficient escape route for these youngsters. As a squad from the Edo State Command of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, matches their pace. The young men and women are patrons of a drug den in Amagba community, a developing area on the outskirts of Benin City, the Edo State capital. The raid follows the NDLEA's stakeout of the club, which had spanned weeks and reveals the sale of illicit drugs to customers here. These are cannabis. They are in sachets. The owner of the spot seems oblivious to the gravity of his action or even its consequences. This is used for what? The NDLEA team takes its search around the business area. This Where is the water? This is This is This is Monkite. We call it Monkai. It's a mixture of Gogoro local gin and cannabis sativa. The operator of the club explains why he's into the business. What do you mean to do business? I mean, I don't go commit crime. Let me get a seller. The agency is concerned, especially about the easy access to cannabis sativa, the so-called found spot and others like it, provides to the young. The, the problem is huge. If we had to go on a daily basis, it should take us several months to complete all the illicit drug uh, locations within the town. So I will seize this opportunity to appeal to the to the government and well-meaning in individuals, particularly parents, because none of these people, you know, fell from the sky. Away from the club and the rests, the State Drug Control Committee says it's taking steps to tackle the challenge of drug abuse. We have set up a lot of work plan which the governor has approved. It borders on the need to sensitize the people and to create more awareness on the dangers of drug abuse and illicit drug trafficking. The Edo State Command of the NDLEA, in a report earlier this year, revealed that 22 cannabis farms measuring 9.337 hectares were discovered and destroyed in 2019, while 211 drug-dependent persons were cancelled and reunited with their families. Jessica Oluguser, Channels Television News. The former governor of Imo State, Mr. Emeka Ihedioha, will on Tuesday, February the 18th, begin his quest to convince the Supreme Court to reverse itself on the judgment sacking him from office. The Supreme Court fixed the date after receiving the appeal filed by Mr. Ihedioha, asking to review the January the 14th judgment, which declared the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, Mr. Hope Uzadimma as the duly elected governor of the state. The decision was reached on the grounds that results from 388 polling units were excluded when the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, announced the final results of the polls in 2019. Mr. Hedioha filed the appeal on the heels of protests by supporters of the PDP, demanding the review and reversal of the judgments by the APEC court. Still ahead on the news at 10, irate youths protest as multiple accidents on the Lagos Abercota Expressway kills seven people, leaving 10 others injured. Stay with us.